Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today, we're looking at the top 10 most valuable cards from Modern Horizons 2. Starting off the list, we have Grist the Hunger Tide. This three loyalty creepy insect Golgari boy is a brand new card to magic, which you love to see. To start with, if it's not on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 insect creature in addition to other types, which means it can actually be your commander, which is very, very cool. The plus one ability is also cool in that you create a 1-1 one, one insect and mill a card. If an insect card was milled this way, you put a loyalty counter on Grist and repeat the process. So absolutely stack your Grist decks with all those insect cards. Maximise your chances to up Grist to that ultimate loyalty ability. For minus two, we have Sack a Creature to destroy target creature or planeswalker, which as an ability you can use straight away is cool especially if you want to destroy those big bad creatures your opponents may have late in the game of Commander. Finally, its ultimate ability makes each opponent lose life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So make sure your deck has plenty of ways to mill to get those creatures in your graveyard so when you do this, you're absolutely wiping your opponents out of the game. Grist, you're a wicked new card and one that makes me think I should buy several dozen Modern Horizon 2 boxes just to make sure I get a copy of you. I don't know. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. Before we get to the next card in this list, make sure to smash that like button and of course subscribe for all things MTG. It's completely free to do and it helps the channel grow. It's a win-win for everyone. Now, let's get back to the list. And remember, these prices are what they're currently estimated the week before release, so expect some of these to drop after release day. For the joint 9th and 8th place, we have Scalding Tarn and Misty Rainforest. Coming in both currently valued around the $48 range, the Zendikar Fetchlands are back again. Fetchlands have been highly sought after and it's very rare that they actually come in any MTG sets, but these bad boys are the most expensive of these ones in MH2. Usually in these videos, I only talk about the top 10 most valuable from a draft booster box as they're the most commonly opened, but I will say, if you are filthy rich and cracking those collector booster boxes, look out for those retro versions of these cards, especially in foil, as they're up there in the most valuable of all the set, each looking at a near $200 value. When you consider it's just a land, that is insane. The other fetches are of course in this set, but if it's not Simic or Is It, then fortunately they're quite a bit cheaper. Hopefully with all these reprints they're slowly drip feeding us, slowly but surely it will bring the price of these cards down and eventually there'll be about a tenner each one day, right? <laughs> no. Next on my list, another brand new card to magic, we have Ignoble Hierarch. Not to be confused with Noble Hierarch, this naughty shaman is a naught one Jund Goblin with Exalted. And the striking resemblance to Noble Hierarch is uncanny, right down to that Exalted mechanic and even the flavour text at the bottom. A pesky card if you've got those big creatures to attack with to trigger that exalted mechanic, but also one that can be broken if you're running Simic and dropping all those creatures or cards that create copies of Ignoble Hierarch. As it's not legendary, you can create as many copies of it as you want. But also, if you just wanted to go Route 1, it's also that perfect early game rampy creature that'll help you in the long run. Still, it's a bit mad this card is also valued at the near $50 range, so let's hope we get a reprint of it in Modern Horizons 3, 4, 5 and beyond. With Noble Hierarch itself a few reprints deep and all versions hitting currently around the $20 mark, you'd hope this would be a card that'll eventually level out to at least that range upon release. One can dream. Just missing out on the top half, we're looking at Grief. An aptly named card because if this is used against you, it'll cause you grief. Grief is a 3-2 elemental with menace that says when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it and they discard that card. Instantly, I want to use this card by comboing it side by side in my imaginary Turgrid commander deck. Sack those cards and then bring them to the field on your side. A card like this is one you want to play over and over again, so maybe make a deck that has plenty of ways of bringing this card out from the graveyard or have those ways to flicker or just have those ways to bring it back to your hand so you can do this over and over again. The more you're doing this, the more chaos you're creating and potentially removing big cards or creatures from your opponent's hand and out the game. Grief also has that evoke cost where you can cast it for free by exiling a black card from your hand. That is absolutely huge. Another non-legendary creature that's at that $50 range, let's hope these price estimates are way off and they plummet on release. I want some grief. Take 
If you want some, I'll give it you. Next on the list, a reprint that everyone is excited about, we have Cabal Coffers. First released in Torment back in 2002, this is a card that Magic fans have been screaming for. The Coffers say if you pay two and tap it, you can add a black mana for each swamp you control. I'm telling you now, if I pack this next week, it's going straight in my Ayara deck. Whilst other cards have come along since, like Cabal Stronghold, they've just not stood the test of time in terms of popularity, like Cabal Coffers has, and it's just that special card that hits different especially with the famous deadly pairing of that and Urborg, Tomb of Yorgmoth. Essential if you're running a multicoloured deck or just have plenty of lands that are colourless. Always a card that when reprinted is expected to have that high value, considering the original card from Torment has even hit the $100 plus value in recent years. I'm so excited at the prospect of pulling some of these cards, I just hope Wizards doesn't do me dirty like it did with that Throne of Eldraine box the other week. The memories still hurt. Missing out narrowly on the top three most valuable, we have Chatterfang, Squirrel General. Yes, a legendary squirrel is hitting Modern Horizons, and this is another brand new card. This squirrel is a 3-3 with Forest Walk that says if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 green squirrel tokens are created instead. Obviously, for Chatterfang, you're going Squirrel Tribal, which, from this set, there promises to be some good additions. And, also, you can go the Changeling route if you want some more non-Squirrel Squirrels, which is always the tried and tested route in Tribal decks. And of course, if you've got that really relaxed playgroup, sets like Unstable and Unsanctioned have plenty of fun and stupid Squirrels that would make a deck like this even more fun. Chatterfang also has that ultimate ability of paying a black and sacking X Squirrels to give target creature plus X minus X until end of turn. With Magic slowly increasing its love and support for Squirrel Tribal, this would absolutely be a card that would become very, very fun as a commander. Let's just hope for an Ice Age secret lair so we can get that Scrat legendary creature card. Next on the list we have Urza's Saga. No, not the super expensive set where you can pull a guy's cradle. Urza's Saga is another new card from MH2 that is an enchantment land. A really, really unique card where one lore counter gives you that one mana ramp. The second law counter will give you the ability to tap two, tap Urza Saga and you create a 0 colourless construct artifact creature token with plus one plus one for each artifact you control. If you've got this in a deck, you want to make sure you've either got millions of those cheap artifacts out or those cards that will be creating you loads of artifacts. Because if you're creating a construct creature for two mana, you may as well get as much mana value from it as you can. For its third lore counter, it lets you search your library for a naught or one mana card and put it onto the battlefield. Those high level players will be going for big boys like Mana Crypt or Jeweled Lotus. But of course, there are plenty of options available. Cards to draw you some more cards, cards to ramp you with, and of course, just dive into your deck and dig out that Soul Ring. Because Soul Ring. This is a really wicked new card and one that I actually think a lot of people will be making a commander staple because of that turn three law counter special. What a card. Runner up and the second most expensive card is Sword of Hearth and Home. The MTG fanbase has been clamoring for a new Swords of card and here we have the plus two plus two pro white and green option. Hearth and Home says whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, search your library for a basic land card, and put both cards onto the battlefield under your control. This new Swords card is so, so good. Sneak in a few ways to cheat out those equipment, because a card like this you want to get it out onto the field ASAP and not leave it to gather dust in the middle of your library. Whenever you're getting that damage through, you're getting out some nice ramp, and hopefully you're essentially flickering out a card in your deck with a tasty ETB trigger, so you're getting plenty more out of that Swords trigger. Maybe sneak this card into those decks with all those extra combat triggers, get the extra damage through and trigger off Hearth and Home again and again. The most recent two new Swords cards were actually released in the first Modern Horizons set back in 2019, so it seems a pretty perfect fit to get the eighth Sword card in the set. Just a mere and gruel to go. I am excited. And for the most expensive card from Modern Horizons 2, we have Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Being a Marmoset lover, I'm instantly drawn to this monkey pirate. The pet of Karpani Zevenwat, Ragavan is a 2-1 legendary creature that says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library. Until the end of turn, you may play that card. You also have that dash mechanic to pay a generic and a red to cast Ragavan, 
giving it haste and then return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. But with Ragavan, we really want to make that top trigger count. So of course, the one way to go is Voltron the living daylights out of this lovable monkey. Beef this monkey up any way you can because you want that damage to go through to trigger Ragavan to get those treasure tokens and hopefully steal some spicy cards from your opponents. The Gathering of the Magic iconic legendary card of the deck award absolutely has to go to Gold Span Dragon. Get in another creature that's going to create you even more treasures when it attacks and it also doubles the cracking value of those treasure tokens if you need the mana. Of course, other cards like Breaches and Atali would fit so well in this deck if you wanted to go that sub-theme of getting all those triggers that will steal all sorts of cards from your opponents. Because shenanigans are fun and who doesn't love a bit of shenanigans in magic? And who doesn't love the word shenanigans? Shenanigans. What were we talking about? There we have it, that is the list. Thank you for watching and make sure to smash that like button and of course subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. But for now, I'm all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.